Hey guys, your postman just dropped off a huge package from Victor in Vienna, Austria. Just a big honking heavy thing. No idea. Wasn't expected. But uh, let's go ahead and cut our way into this thing. Let's see what Victor sent us. He and I are, have been sending locks back and forth for quite a while. So some most of his are quite challenging. Don't know what to expect. Come out of there. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, nothing else in the box. We don't need that. We have. It looks like a cookie tin with a lock on it. A Lux lock. Huh. Alright, well. A little awkward here. Let me turn the camera down a little bit. So, well, we want to know what's inside of this thing. Let's first see if we can bypass this lock. The easy way in. Of course, Victor probably wouldn't do that. But Nope, I'm not going to do that for us. All right, easy enough. Uh, then I'm going to put this up here so I can get at it. And where is my tension wrench? Okay, yeah, a little bit awkward. I'm just full of excuses today, I know. All right, I'm going to try one of Dan's standard hooks. Lux lock. It's got an. It looks like a national stock number on it. Okay, I'm going to try bottom of the keyway. Maybe not that one. So that top of the keyway just doesn't working for me. Okay, all the way to the back. A little bit of tension. There's like three. Was two. There we go. Let's find out what Victor thought was so important to send an Austrian treasure chest in 30 millimeter. I don't know if that's a national stock number or what, but it's a Lux. Felt like a four pinner. One security pin. It felt like. Okay, we have a letter. We have some Austrian packing paper. Let me take a look at this note off screen. Okay, he says he's been wanting to send another batch of locks for a long time. Make it worth it and hopefully be a challenge. Here's what's in the package. Okay, he lists, basically lists the locks. Um, says he did repin a few of these, so rather than me bore you with reading this letter, I'll study it in detail later. Uh, it's here, I guess, is the key for the locks. guessing. Yep, okay. And we have some a tension wrench. Looks like a homemade tension wrench. Pretty cool. Fit in my wallet. Oh my god. And we look like we got some pretty cool looking picks here too. These look all hand finished. I don't know. I doubt he made them. They all have huck on them, but they all look hand polished and hand finished. Pretty nice looking picks. Let's pull these out of here. Soft rubber handles. Very comfortable. Very nice. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And let's see what else we've got here. Man, there's a lot of them. And that's good because I've been running low on locks. I'm going to put them right in a pan so they don't spill out. Of the I'm running low on locks to pick for a while. All right, let's take a look. We have a Camel hardware made in the People's Republic of China. It looks like a dimple lock, and he's got his name on it. So it's usually the way I like to mark them with my label maker. Okay, we got a dimple lock. It is a half cylinder. 
see if we can get it to work here. There we go. All right, does work. All right, that's one. We have a no name. Yeah, there's nothing on this at all. No key, doesn't look like. Long cylinder looks, man. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, looks like seven pins. And some kind of steel plate there. Probably anti-snap. We have a Schlage. We've seen these guys before, but I got a feeling this one is not a standard pinning. Don't know. It looks like an older, very old lock. Looks like a Yale, at least a Yale keyway. Okay, again, probably not standard pinning. We have, oh, a Euro lock. There it is. I didn't know there was a real one named Euro. Standard Yale keyway, no key for it. Got his name there, so I'm probably guessing this is also custom pinned. Another snapper. It is an Uneva. So if I can get that out. Give you an idea of what the key looks like. Looks like some unusual grooves down there near the tip. I don't know if there's going to be a uh, element down there we have to deal with, or if that's just some funky keyway grooves. I don't know. Might be for, strictly for proprietary keying. Uh, another Yale type. It's got a chrome finish. Kind of a weird tailpiece on this one. No, nothing else about it. No key for it. Oh, wait a minute. There's a key. Oh, that's the key for the Schlage. Hopefully. Maybe. Maybe not. No. Okay, we have a, oh, a Ruko, an older Ruko. These can be really difficult to get inside of if you left the original pins in it. For Bill, that's bad. And looks like we got one and two. This is an Abus, but I don't know if he repinned this to different pinnings or something else about it. But again, a Got a dimple lock. These abuses are not easy. Take a look at that keyway. It's just really difficult to get in there and get around the corner of that warding. So anyway, we have a lot. There's nothing else in there, right? Yep. We have a pile of new locks to get some new videos done in the lock lab. Thank goodness, because like I said, I've been running out for a while now. Hard to find decent locks. Plenty of master locks out there, but they're just no fun, fellas. And now I've got some new picks from, uh, from Victor to try to pick these things with. Victor, thank you so much for all the locks. I'll get busy on them, and I'll be trying to use these new picks, too. Thanks, fellas, for your time. Everybody stay safe. Stay legal.